Good afternoon, everybody. This is the daily video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. My name is the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. We're getting ready to record Sunday's worship service, which is why I'm sitting at home, working from home in, uh, in a tie right now. Last night at Thursday night worship, we talked about endurance a little bit as a noun, an adjective, a verb. And endurance is a noun. It's the power of enduring an unpleasant or difficult situation without giving way. And there's a way that what's called for in this moment is endurance, right? To keep going one week at a time, one day at a time, one minute at a time, if we have to. But one thing that is also true about endurance is that as we endure, we also adapt. This is not just a thing that we are going through for a few months as a church, a country, and a world. It's a thing that we will adapt to in some complicated ways. I'm a little worried that out of necessity, we're all going to develop some moderate to severe agoraphobia before it's all done, but also in some good ways. Gabrielle Hamilton, uh, the chef of Prune Restaurant in New York City, wrote a long piece this week on closing down Prune. And the whole thing is absolutely worth reading. But it ends with this meditation on, on what this time means for her. She writes, And yet even with the gate indefinitely shut against the coronavirus, I've been dreaming again. But this time, I'm not at home fantasizing about a restaurant I don't even have the keys to. This time, I've been sitting still and silent inside the shuttered restaurant I already own that has another 10 years on the lease. I spend hours inside each day on a wooden chair in the empty, clean space with the windows papered up. And I listen to the cooler's hum, the compressor click on and off periodically. The thunder that echoes up from the basement as the ice machine drops its periodic sheet of thick cubes into the insulated bin. My body has a thin blue thread of electricity coursing through it. Sometimes I rearrange the tables. For some reason, I can't see wanting deuces anymore. No more two tops. What will happen come Valentine's Day? It's no mystery why this prolonged isolation has made me find the tiny 24 square inch tables that I've been cramming my food and my customers into for 20 years suddenly repellent. I want round tables, big tables, six people tables, eight tops, early supper, home before midnight, long lingering civilized Sunday lunches with sun streaming in through the front French doors. I want old regulars to wander back into the kitchen where I lift the lids off the pots and show them what there is to eat. I want to bring to their tables small dishes of the feta cheese I've learned to make these long idle weeks with a few slices of the ham I've been hanging downstairs to cure while we wait to reopen. And to again hear Greg rattle the ice, shaking perfectly proportioned vespers that he pours right to the brim of the chilled glass without spilling over. I've been shuttered before. With no help from the government, Prune has survived 9-11, the blackout, Hurricane Sandy, the recession, months of a city water main replacement, online reservation systems, you still have to call us on the telephone, and we still use a pencil and paper to take reservations. We've survived the tyranny of convenience culture and the invasion of caviar, Seamless, and Grubhub, so I'm going to let the restaurant sleep, like the beauty she is, shallow breathing, dormant, bills unpaid, and see what she looks like when she wakes up so well rested, young all over again in a city that may no longer recognize her, want her or even need her. She's writing about restaurants, but she could just as easily be writing about churches. What are we going to be? How are we going to adapt in this moment? Maybe the time of two tops is over in churches as well as in restaurants. So what kind of tables will we sit down at? What will we dream up in this time? That's the question that keeps me dreaming, even as we endure through this. I'll see you Sunday. Have a great night.